What's going on everyone? Welcome back to Knights of the Nerds Table. On June 13th, Amazon will be dropping the fourth season of the rambunctious and raunchy series, The Boys. Before we dive into what's going on with our boys in their fight against Vought, be sure to like and subscribe to our channel for more content. If you don't, Homelander might come pay you a visit. Now, let's get into it. The Boys was originally published as a comic in 2006 under the DC Comics Wildstorm imprint. Six issues of the comic were released before the series was canceled. In February of 2007, it was picked up by Dynamite Entertainment, which resumed publication of the series in May of that year. The Boys continued with Dynamite through 2014. In 2017, Amazon acquired the rights to the comic and began to develop a series for it. The first season premiered in July of 2019 and it was an instant hit. So popular, a spin-off series called Gen V was created and Homelander recently made an appearance in Mortal Kombat. If you haven't watched The Boys before, I would describe it as Game of Thrones meets Zack Snyder's Watchmen, a deconstructive approach to the superhero genre where everyone is dirty and the soups are corrupt. The premise of the show is that the superheroes are not born but created by a multi-company corporation called Vought. Vought has created their own Justice League or Avengers team called The Seven. They make toys, merchandise, video games, and movies out of their super beings. Problem is, Frankenstein soups are mostly terrible people. So Vought spends the majority of their time attempting to clean up these cake crusaders messes and trying to maintain a squeaky clean Disney-like image for them. The worst of them is the main big bad, Homelander, who is just an exaggerated evil Superman character. Homelander is the leader of The Seven, but he's anything but heroic. He murders people, abuses his own staff and his teammates. He even fell in love with a Nazi last season. All around, not a good guy. But Vought's public relations team is doing whatever they can to keep their crazy Clark Kent to be seen as an all-American hero. But not everyone is buying their metahuman propaganda. There's a group of boys and one girl that is tired of their shenanigans with all of them having a personal axe to grind against Homelander and other corrupt heroes. Now where did we leave off in this story? Wouldn't be surprised if you hadn't remembered. That was all the way back in 2022. Tom Brady was still in the NFL back then. It's been a second. I got you covered. Let's do a brief recap of Season 3. The season premiere entitled Payback opens up at the premiere of the Vought Studios movie, Dawn of the Seven. It's a fan-driven director's cut of the film, giving two nod star boy Zack Snyder in regards to his two DC movies, Dawn of Justice, and of course, hashtag release the Snyder Cut. Homelander, played by Anthony Starr, is not enjoying the movie. Not even a Charlie Theron cameo can cheer him up. He's going through a media humiliation ritual, apologizing for his romantic involvement with Nazi superhero Stormfront last season. Things are looking up for our boy Huey, however, played by Jack Quaid, the son of Hollywood actor Dennis Quaid. He got a job at the Federal Bureau of Superhero Affairs, going after bad superheroes the right way. Butcher, the leader of the boys, played by Carl Urban, isn't really enjoying staying on the right end of the Mel, played by Laz Alonzo, is still trying to adjust to life co-parenting with his daughter. He's trying to give up the superhero hunting life, or at least make it less obvious. The CEO of Vought, Stan Edgar, played by Giancarlo Esposito, informs Homelander that to help Vought with their ratings, Starlight will now be chosen as co-captain of the Seven. Homelander is furious and takes out his frustrations on A-Train. Maeve, an alcoholic version of this universe's Wonder Woman, gives Butcher something called Compound V. It temporarily gives regular people superior powers in hopes of combating Homelander. Meanwhile, Huey follows his boss, Congresswoman Victoria Newman, and discovers her having some type of confrontation with a guy that claims to know her. Newman reveals that she too is a super and ends this guy for trying to have her reveal something about Red River. In the next episode, The Only Man in the Sky, we check back with Butcher who is having hallucinations about whether he should take Temp V or not. And then he meets up with Mother's Milk. He tries to convince him to get back into the soup hunting game, but Milk declines. Frenchie and Kamika are investigating the 1980s Vought team Payback, which includes going after Crimson Countess and Gunpowder. Gunpowder is hanging out at an event that is clearly meant to parody the NRA. Butcher confronts Gunpowder and attempts to blackmail him into telling him what happened to Soldier Boy, Payback's version of Homelander, basically evil Captain America, shield and all. Gunpowder refuses and almost destroys Butcher in the parking lot. Butcher escapes with his life. Kamika and Frenchie aren't having too much luck either, as their attempt to confront Crimson Countess at Vautland is also unfruitful. Stan Edgar continues to make life difficult for Homelander. He tells Homelander that he's letting Starlight have more creative control since she is more marketable than Homelander. Disappointed, Homelander visits a very battered Stormfront who is physically unable to wish him a happy birthday. Homelander is then called to save a civilian who is trying to jump off a building. While he's talking, news breaks Stormfront pass. Completely broken now, he convinces the civilian to jump. Vought's speedster A-Train is still struggling with a rebrand. He's attempting to lean more into his African-American roots for clout since he's losing his speed. Ashley doesn't really buy it and she shrugs it off. Huey investigates more into the congresswoman, visiting her old foster home. He discovers that she was taken in by Stan Edgar at a young age. He he calls Butcher to tell him that news. Butcher decides to take Tempe and he uses his new power to take down Gunpowder. Episode ends after Homelander during the television broadcast of his birthday celebration breaks out in an entitled tirade. Tired of apologizing, he proclaims he is better than everyone. He shouldn't need to apologize for anything he does. Episode 3, Barbary Coast, is a banger of an episode. Despite his televised tirade, Homelander is actually loved by the population. His points go up by 21%. He feels pretty emboldened, like no one can stop him now. Mother's Milk returns to the crew, and together they meet with Grace Mallory to understand what destroys Soldier Boy. Huey 
Huey fully commits to the old crew and has Kamiko break his arm to give him a real out for his job. The boys confront Mallory at a safe house where Ryan, Homelander's son, is hiding. Mallory tells them about Soldier Boy and he's every bit of a jerk as Homelander. During a battle with the Russians, Soldier Boy, played by Jensen Ackles, was reportedly destroyed by the Russians, never to be seen again. They killed Soldier Boy. What? Who? The Russians! They had some kind of gun or, or weapon or something! This upsets Butcher, as he feels if he had known what stopped Soldier Boy, he would have been able to stop Homelander. Later on, Frenchie gets kidnapped by Lil Nina, a Russian mob boss and ex-employer of Frenchie. During this whole time, a Vought-sponsored reality show called American Heroes is being hosted by Starlight and Homelander. The premise is that whoever wins gets to be a part of the Seven. On the show, Homelander fakes that he and Starlight are in a relationship together to help viewership. Starlight's childhood boyfriend, a superhero named Supersonic, is in the competition. Instead of choosing two contestants, Contestants to join the Seven, Homelander wants to welcome back the Deep to the Seven. Starlight is obviously super against that. They compromise, allowing the Deep and Supersonic to join the Seven. Starlight warns Supersonic about Homelander and advises him against joining, but he refuses. Episode ends with Homelander declaring that he can do whatever he wants. Episode 4, Glorious Five Year Plan, continues the action in the last episode. Huey finds out that Butcher was using Temp V and he is furious. Butcher makes Huey keep it a secret from the others. The boys confront little Nina and bargain with her to save Frenchie's friends Cherie's life and Frenchie. Nina says she'll give them info on a Russian lab if they take out a specific Russian oligarch. Kamiko is up for the challenge. She completes the mission barely with her life. She feels kind of burnt out by the mission and underappreciated by Butcher. So she and Frenchie declare that they will leave the group after going to the Russian lab. Before they go to the lab, Butcher shoots up some Temp V. Unbeknownst to him, so does Huey. When they get into a pinch, Butcher uses his superhuman power and Huey hilariously teleports. But every time he does that, he leaves his clothes behind, appearing naked. Kamiko is injured in the battle and her body refuses to heal as it usually does. They are then forced to bring her into a hospital. During this time, they find that the super weapon is actually Soldier Boy. Soldier Boy awakes from his slumber and emits a red blast of energy, leveling the place, and he escapes the boys. Homelander is still feeling pretty confident about himself. He goes around to a news show blaming the mainstream media spin for any negative press. This doesn't go unnoticed by Stan Edgar, and he attempts to convince Congresswoman Newman to find Homelander for his outburst on TV to temper his attitude. In a surprise turn of events, at the press conference where she was supposed to announce sanctions against Homelander, she instead announces that her agency will be looking into white collar crimes that Edgar may have committed. This causes Edgar to at least temporarily step down as CEO of Vought. Ashley is promoted to active CEO, and Homelander is in charge of Vought with no restrictions. Edgar makes sure to remind Homelander that there is now no one around to clean up after him. Why is that? Because there is no one left to cover for you either. A-Train is still grifting off his race as they mock the shot-for-shot shot Kylie Jenner Pepsi commercial. He finally does something substantial for his people by asking the Seven to punish a cop superhero named Blue Hawk who is over-policing minority neighborhoods. The Deep and Homelander are against it because it makes the Seven look soft on crime. Starlight recruits Supersonic and Maeve in her plan to have a coup against Homelander. Supersonic foolishly tries to recruit A-Train to their side. A-Train betrays them and tells Homelander, who destroys Supersonic and shows Starlight to make sure she never crosses him. Episode 5 continues the chaos. Mother's Milk and Butcher are not seeing eye to eye what to do with Soldier Boy. Butcher wants to find him and convince him to fight Homelander. M.M. wants nothing to do with Soldier Boy since Soldier Boy killed his mother, uncle, and grandfather in a car crash when M.M. was young. Regardless, they do need to find him, so they decide to go to Crimson Countess in hopes that they intercept Soldier Boy before he can get to her. Blue Hawk is compelled to give a filmed apology to the community center. It goes south incredibly quick and ends with Blue Hawk severely injuring A-Train's brother. Queen Maeve delivers more Temp V to Butcher and they make passionate love. She runs into Homelander later who captures her and reportedly sends her to a recovery resort. Kamiko is recovering in the hospital and has a musical number inspired by Judy Garland. It seems as though for now her powers are gone or at least subdued. She and Frenchie share a kiss. Frenchie goes off to get some food and is immediately captured by Nina's men. The rest of the boys are waiting to ambush Soldier Boy at Countess Crimson's house. Butcher doesn't believe he can trust M.M. so he drugs him before the encounter. Starlight shows up and Huey has to admit to her that he's been taking Temp V again even though he told her he wouldn't anymore. Huey admits he takes Temp V so he can finally save Starlight for once. Starlight reminds him that she likes him the way he is but that doesn't comfort him. Soldier Boy does indeed show up confronts Crimson Countess about her helping the Russians to capture him. He glows again and blows up Crimson's trailer, ending her. Episode ends with Huey and Butcher leaving with Soldier Boy, while Starlight and a Paso m &M stay behind. Episode 6 of The Boys is the infamous hero -gasm episode. Still a thing, eh? It's my thing. I founded it in 52. This will be the hardest episode to record while staying in line with the YouTube guidelines. Thankfully, it starts out pretty tame with the deep parodying Gal Gadot singing Imagine by John Lennon with celebrities. Then we go straight to Butcher, Huey, and Soldier Boy, who is successfully convinced to help them against Homelander. Up next on Soldier Boy's hit list are the TNT twins. Meanwhile, Homelander and his new head of crime analytics, The Deep, are dealing with Soldier Boy problems too. Apparently, Soldier Boy went to Manhattan and once again emitted the laser light which destroyed civilians. Black Noir completely abandons the crew and goes off the grid to hide from Soldier Boy. A-Train is sent to the twins' house as he predicts 
Drake's soldier boy might end up there. Kamiko gets captured by Nina's men as well. She's taken to a warehouse where Frenchie and Sherry are tied up. Kamiko breaks out of her chains, powers restored, and ends the men and Nina. But that still makes her unhappy. After waking up, Mother's Milk is pretty peeved at the gang. He and Starlight team up to stop Huey, Butcher, and Soldier Boy. They arrive together at the twins' house, and they realize they stumbled into the infamous Herogasm event, a place where debaucherous soups do debauchery. Starlight finds the Deep in a compromising position with an octopus. She threatens to blackmail him and tell Homelander. Deep then warns her that Homelander is on his way. Huey and the boys arrive, and Huey decides to confront A-Train there. Huey demands that A-Train apologize for the murder of his girlfriend back in Season 1. With A-Train's brother paralyzed, he is now truly sorry for what he did to Huey. Huey's bewildered by this and punches A-Train. Starlight grabs Huey and tells him that Homelander is on the way. MM sees Soldier Boy and tries to use a bomb to destroy him, but it doesn't work. Soldier Boy confronts the twins, and as he gets stressed, he glows again and blows the whole mansion up. During this time, A-Train grabs Blue Hawk and drags him behind him and takes him out for what he did to his brother. Homelander does show up and has a showdown with Soldier Boy and a souped up Huey and Butcher. They almost take Homelander down, but at the last second, he escapes. Amid the destruction, Starlight live streams on Instagram and exposes everything that is happening. She says that Vought and Homelander are lying about public safety and she announces her decision to quit the Seven. Episode 7, we open up to the media blitz attacking Starlight for her outburst, calling her crazy and a liar. We finally get to see what happened to Maeve. It seems that she's being held up somewhere in the Vought building. Homelander reveals he's only keeping her alive to harvest her eggs. Kimiko, after wrestling with herself about being without her powers, begs Starlight to go get her some compound feed to get her back in the game. Starlight relents after some convincing. Butcher, Huey, and Soldier Boy are going after the next member of his old team at Payback. The bipolar Mindstorm is next. He lives in some cabin secluded. His brain infiltrates Butcher's brain and puts him into a comatose. During the comatose, we see visions of Butcher's past, an abusive father and his life of violence. We basically see what made Butcher Butcher. When they finally find Mindstorm, Huey teleports him back to where Butcher is unconscious and begs for Butcher's life. Mindstorm wakes him up. Huey promises Mindstorm that he will keep him safe. Promises don't mean much though because Soldier Boy makes little work of him. Before he expires, he tells Soldier Boy that Nora was told to take Soldier Boy to the Russians directly from Vought. Meanwhile, Noor is hiding out in a secret location. We get a retelling of his backstory with Looney Tune-like characters. We learn about how terrible Soldier Boy was to Noor. Now Edgar pulled Noor aside and told him how he was going to take down Soldier Boy. The little cartoon creatures give him the courage to rise up. Mother Milk's co-parenting is still on rocky ground, with his daughter's stepfather, Todd, taking his daughter to a Homelander rally. Todd, fully brainwashed like a MAGA Trump bot, goes off on MM, blaming the mainstream media for attacking his golden-haired hero, Homelander. M.M. loses his temper and knocks Todd out. His daughter does see that, and that makes M.M. reconsider his actions. Starlight sneaks into a vault lab and reads a report that says Temp V is fatal. It can only be used three to five times before it fatally wounds the user. On her way out, Homelander confronts her, and she barely escapes with her life by revealing that she livestreamed their conversation. She gets on the phone to warn Huey, but Butcher picks up the phone instead, so she tells him. But Butcher decides not to tell Huey. The episode ends with Soldier Boy calling Homelander personally on the phone. He reveals that he has learned that Vought created Homelander through his genetics, making Homelander Soldier Boy's son. And here we are, at the finale, the incident White Hot Wild. Homelander finally tracks down his son Ryan, who takes to Homelander since he and Butcher are on bad terms. Ashley and the Deep attempt to move Maeve to a secure location since there is an outcry for her release. Maeve overpowers her captors and escapes. On their way en route to the city, Butcher takes a stop and knocks Huey unconscious, preventing him from taking more Temp V. Huey is picked up by Starlight and they head to the city together. Frenchie has obtained a nerve agent that the Russians used to subdue Soldier Boy. Butcher and Soldier Boy arrive in the room and trap everyone in the closet with Maeve's help. And the group led by Starlight heads to Vought Tower to make more Novichok and eliminate Soldier Boy. Black Noir finally comes back ready to face Soldier Boy. Homelander confronts Noir and asks him if he knew that Soldier Boy was Homelander's father. Black Noir admits that he knew, and Homelander rips him apart. Not a smart move. The showdown finally happens, but Homelander tries to appeal to Soldier Boy as a family man. He brings in his son Riot, introducing Soldier Boy to his grandson. Soldier Boy scoffs and calls Homelander soft, and they do battle. Butcher feels a little uneasy with Ryan in the room and tells Soldier Boy to back off. When Soldier Boy refuses, Butcher turns on Soldier Boy. Meanwhile, Maeve and Homeland are in a death battle, while Starlight, Butcher, MM, and Kamiko take on Soldier Boy. Soldier Boy begins to glow again, and if he blew up, he would eliminate everyone. Queen Maeve sacrificed herself by pushing Soldier Boy out the window and both of them blowing up, seemingly gone. In the aftermath, we see where Season 4 might take us. Maeve is actually alive, but she will go off with her girlfriend in hiding, presumed dead. She did unfortunately lose her powers. Soldier Boy is defeated and is put to sleep again. The boys all pick up their lives from there. Thanks to the Temp V, Butcher learns that he only has 10 months to live. Congressman Newman will be the new VP candidate for presidency. Homelander, however, is becoming more emboldened. When he goes to a rally to introduce Ryan to the world, he lasers up a protester. And to his surprise, his fans love it. Oh dear. 
Victoria Newman is closer than ever to the Oval Office and under the muscly thumb of Homelander, who is consolidating his power. Butcher, with only months to live, has lost Becca's son and his job as the boys' leader. The rest of the team are fed up with his lies. With the stakes higher than ever, they have to find a way to work together and save the world before it's too late. What I do know is that Jeffrey Dean Morgan from Watchmen will be in it, so it's definitely worth a watch. Thanks for watching Knights of the Nerds Table.